Hello everyone, my name is Mess. Most people will probably know me under the name of Zuzan or Colorized History, both on Reddit and on Facebook. I started colorizing around 2009 or 2010, and I've been featured on a myriad of book covers both here in Denmark and abroad, and I've also done a few documentaries, including Blood and Glory, The Civil War in Color for the History Channel, and most of my professional work has actually been with the History Channel. The aim of this video series is to teach you how to colorize black and white photographs from scratch. So in collaboration with History Colored, I'm going to take you through everything you need to know about Photoshop, brushes, layers, groups, and colors. And you can follow along with me and colorize a historical photograph. Feel free to pause and rewind when you feel like it or ask questions in the comments or on my Facebook and Instagram page and I'll do my best to answer. The first video here will teach you the basics of Photoshop and what you need to know to start working. So the tools needed for this are quite simple. You only really need Photoshop, as I have personally always worked in CS6, and I've developed my technique in this program. But I have worked with CS4 and 5 in the past, so I'm not really sure how far back the compatibility goes on this. And it's also possible to work in GIMP, which is a free software. However, I would highly recommend Photoshop CS6, as it is the latest and greatest, and it'll just be much easier to follow my tutorial. To begin, you're going to need to pick an image. Now, in this case, I'm going to go with a portrait of Abraham Lincoln. You can still follow along even if you don't choose Lincoln specifically because the same technique still applies. Once we've got the image somewhere on our computer, simply open up Photoshop and drag and drop the image in, or right click on the image and open with Photoshop. First things first, I'm gonna give you the settings that I personally use. If you're using GIMP, this may be very different, which is why I do suggest a newer version of Photoshop. Now, once you've loaded the image in, at the very top of the image, you'll see opacity and flow. And you'll see flow is set to 35%. This means if you do one pass with the brush, you're gonna apply 35% of the color of the layer to the photograph. This will give a more authentic feel rather than just applying a flat, hard color all over the place, and it'll just look better. So go ahead and press B to bring up your brush, very easy shortcut, and adjust the flow to 35%. Once you've done that, you're gonna right click on the image, which will bring up your brush settings. And this is also the easiest way to adjust the size of your brush for the future and you'll want to set the hardness to 0%. Now, we're gonna do the same thing for our erase tool, which is key bound to E, another easy shortcut. So go ahead and hit E and adjust the flow to around 50% and the hardness to 0% also. Once this is done, click on window in the top and make sure that your workspace is set to painting. And in that same menu, make sure that layers, navigator and properties are checked as these just make your life a whole lot easier. And it also makes it easier to follow. Now, if you're also wondering about the color scheme of my Photoshop, simply just right click outside the image and select a color that suits you. If you did choose this particular image or one that has a frame still on it, we'll want to crop it first. So simply press C and you'll get your crop menu open up and we'll just drag it aside until you feel enough has been cropped and then right click the image and hit crop and you're done. So once the image is cropped, what we'll want to do is adjust the levels and values of the image to make it easier to colorize. Now this applies to almost every single image that you do and it's something that you just get better at seeing as the time goes on. And it's taken me a long time to get good at just eyeballing it. Firstly, we'll make a new adjustment layer by going to the bottom right and clicking on the middle button, which is a very handy quick select menu and you'll wanna acquaint yourself with this very quickly. So we'll wanna click on the fifth button, which is titled Levels. What we've done now is actually create a layer that adjusts the levels of the image, which is the brightness and darkness values. When you click on the layer and view the properties menu, you should see some, what looks like mountains. And if you choose this particular photograph, you'll see that the black and white sliders are pretty far apart. To normalize and even out these values, we'll move them close to the foot of the mountains. So once this is done and you're satisfied, open up another adjustment layer using the same quick select menu in the bottom right. And this time click brightness or contrast. In the case of the Lincoln image, I don't really think there's any need for a major adjustment. So I'm just gonna drag the slider of the contrast left to minus 25. After this is done, use the same quick select menu in the bottom right and click the black and white option. If you've got an image that's sepia tinted, it's, uh, it's this easy to normalize it to black and white. Now, once the image is adjusted, you can actually begin to work. If you're new to this, you wanna follow along, but if you've worked with Photoshop before and you know how color layers work, you can go ahead and skip this step. What you wanna do is create a group and six color layers, as this is pretty much all we'll need to get you acquainted with colorization. We'll begin by creating a group, which is the button right next to the bottom right quick select menu button. And once that's created, you'll notice that the group is actually created with the setting of pass through. This is the blend setting. So we'll wanna change this to color. Simply click the drop down menu and select color. You can also rename this, which is actually gonna be important later. And we'll just name it skin for now. Simply double click on the name to change it. 
When you've done this, click the Quick Select button again and click Solid Color at the very top. Then don't worry about the sudden burst of color, simply and just click OK. So this is the way that we actually colorize color layers. So we'll need to firstly remove the color from the layer, and you'll do this by clicking the layer mask, which is the square to the left of the layer name, which is color fill one in this case. And when you click it, you should see a square selector around it. Then simply hold down control and press A on your keyboard and then press delete. What we've just done is select all the contents of the layer and delete it at all, very easy. Now to save time, we're simply gonna duplicate this layer and simply right click it and click duplicate and then okay on the menu that pops up and do that until you have six layers. Now, we're gonna rename the layers so we don't get lost, and even though we're only really working with six layers, this is a very important habit to form because on, on more complicated projects, you, you might be working with hundreds of layers. Now, renaming and organizing the layers is actually very important. So we'll name the top layer eye color. The second layer we'll just call eyes. The third is gonna be highlights, and the fourth is gonna be lips. The fifth is gonna be hair, and the final layer is simply gonna be skin. Now, it's important that skin is on the bottom. It's a very technical explanation, but we won't get into that right now. Once you renamed, we'll click the top layer, we'll hold down shift, and we'll click the bottom layer at the same time, which will select all five layers at once. And then we'll change their blend mode, just like you did in the group, to soft light. And next, we'll adjust the colors. You simply double click on the color part of the layer, and you can drag the slider around or input a color code. So I'm going to give you the color codes, but they're really not that important unless we're talking about the skin code. As long as you're in the neighborhood, you'll do just fine. For the actual eye color itself, we're going to go with blue here, and we're going to adjust later, since Lincoln actually had gray blue eyes, not fully blue eyes. So we'll just pick a random light blue color and adjust on the fly. For other projects, you can just feel free to play around with the eye color. It's not very important, and there's no one-fits-all. It's just got to look real. For the actual eye color itself, the inside of the eyes, I use color code 7E3541, with the layer set to 50% opacity, which is the slider top right once you've selected the layer. For highlights, I've got color code C35B78, and the opacity of the layer set to 30%. On this, you'll want subtlety rather than a color pop. Lips is color code BC6C7F with 100% opacity. And hair, again, is just another color that can be randomly selected as we'll adjust it to taste once all is said and done. But I tend to use color code 7F6653 at 100% opacity. This is not important. But what is important is our skin layer. The color code for this is probably the only one you really need. And we'll go with C7A18E. And if necessary, we may increase the saturation on this, but we won't change the actual color. It's just what I found that works best. Once all the layers have been renamed, we'll actually create a new adjustment layer that'll help give our portraits a warm feeling. This is most likely an Alexander Gardner photograph, so it was probably taken under a skylight on a clear day which means daylight will be streaming in and onto Lincoln's face. So again, bottom right, we'll click the quick select menu and then click photo filter, which should open up in default to warming filter 85. And go ahead and drag this out of the group by just dragging and dropping it above group one and leave it be. Now with the layers created, the adjustment to the image done, and it's all cropped and your workspace is ready, we're actually ready to color the photograph. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the video that I'm sure you all came for. In this video, we'll actually begin to put color down onto the image. And if you followed along with the first video, you should have a ready to color Photoshop file with color layers already created and adjustment layers set up. And if you don't, this Photoshop file should be available to download through a link in the description or the bio. And if you've chosen not to use the Abraham Lincoln image, this tutorial will still work just fine. Just follow the basic steps that I outlined and you should be getting a similar result, depending of course on the quality of the source image that you've chosen. One thing to keep in mind is that if you have the Photoshop file ready as we made it in the first video, you can simply use that PSD as a backup to copy over colors or layers into a new project to have a sort of rapid, easy start without having to recreate new color layers every time. Although keep in mind that the adjustment layers that we made aren't a one size fits all and they'll have to be either deleted and recreated or adjusted anew on every single new image. So if you have all the layers set up in front of you, let's simply just begin colorizing. And we will start with the easiest of all, which is the eyes. Remember that when you do this, that the only part of the eye that has color is actually the iris. The pupil has no color, but we're simply just gonna color the entire part in and erase the overflow after us. That's just easier and it saves a lot of time. So this may seem lazy, but it's actually a smart thing to do to simply color over everything and then erase after 
rather than zooming in and resizing your brush for one specific part because it gives a more even blended look and it's a lot faster. So you'll see me do this more as we move on. Next up is the foundation of the face, which is our highlights. So we're gonna place this anywhere where we find tight skin or very thin skin. And a good example of this are the ears and the nose where the blood vessels are a lot more visible than say the arms. And so we'll apply this highlight color to the nose, to the cheeks and to the ears and make sure that when you're applying it to the ears that you don't color into areas that are entirely black like you just saw on the top right of Lincoln's ear there. Once that's finished, we're gonna move on to the lips which is gonna look like you're putting on lipstick but don't worry, once the skin tone covers the lips, it'll look right. We'll do the insides of the eyes next, and for this we're gonna zoom in quite far and we're gonna get a tiny brush out. We'll color in the insides of the eye for this, including the third eyelid remnant in the sides of the eyes. Now once that's done, we're gonna move on to the second largest part, which is the hair. Lincoln had dark to black hair, so we'll simply just cover both the beard and his eyebrows in one color, but if I had any idea that the beard and the hair differed in any way in color, or if I had a painting or a personal account as a reference, I wouldn't do it like this. I would duplicate the hair layer, change the color, and color both in as two separate layers. But in this case, we'll just paint over it all. Next up is the big ticket item, which is the skin. So we'll simply just color in the whole area, including the hair and the insides of the eyes. Now why we do this is a case of it just looks right, and I've always done it this way, and it saves a lot of time not really having to worry about blending the border between this hair and skin. And, you know, lazy people will find the most efficient way to do something. So as for the insides of the eyes, make sure to erase with about 50 to 60% opacity so his eyes don't look too yellow. Now why we do this is that the sclera, which is the white part of the eye, isn't just gray, like if you hadn't colored it. Even white objects like the sclera, it needs color because otherwise it'll look gray. It's a different kind of gray and it's something that'll look weird and blocky and it just detracts from the finished result. Now once that's colored in all the way, make sure to go through your layer masks on every single layer. If you forgot how to do that, it's simply holding down your left alt and clicking on the black square on the layer itself. And then just check for any spots that you might have missed like you see me doing here and simply clean them up by painting in the missing areas while you're inside the layer mask. It's pretty easy actually. And once that's finished, believe it or not, you are actually done with the most basic colorization. We haven't adjusted the colors on the skin tones or the hair like I mentioned in the last video, but for now we have a pretty satisfying result. But the end result is not gonna look as good as you may have expected because we're not entirely finished just yet. For me personally, I always wait until this stage to start shading the whole image and adding in clothing. And if you don't take care of shadows or luminous looking areas like his hair or the bottom of his nose, you won't have a realistic result. What you're looking at might be a good end result for a few people, and if this is you, then great. Feel free to use this method and just skip the next step. But for those of you who want a truly realistic end result, the next video we'll do will cover lighting, shading, and also clothing. In the case of Old Ape here, it's very likely he was just wearing a black suit, so in this case, it would be nothing more than simply a dark blue color, but we'll go over how to do clothing in the next video. So I hope I'll see you there. Hello everyone and welcome to the third and final video in this tutorial series. So we've set up Photoshop, we've created layers, we've imported and adjusted images, and we've actually colorized it too. So what are we missing? The big thing is gonna be shaders, but more minor things like a hint of purple under the eyes and pink on the eyelids and the background colored in, as well as obviously the suit is missing, but that's really not as important as the shading. So we'll begin with that first. What you will want to start out doing is to duplicate the eye color layer for simplicity's sake, click on the layer mask, do control A and delete like we did in the very first video so that we can clear out any color present. We'll then drag the layer out of the group and make another couple of copies. So we have three layers total now outside of the group. We'll adjust the colors of these to the following color code, D, A, E, 8, E, F, or just pretty much anything near this bluish white spectrum. But if you go with my color code, it's gonna look as about as close to mine as possible. The opacity is gonna be set to 100, and the blend mode is gonna be set to soft light. Next, we're gonna click the top layer, hold down our shift key, and then click the bottom layer. So we select all three layers at once, and then right click on the name of the layer and select create clipping mask. What this does is that the layers can now only affect the colors present in the group that they are clipped to, which is where all of our skin color is. And when we do the suit in the background, we'll create specific groups to those colors. And once we duplicate the groups in the next step, we'll have to reclip the layers. So it's just very good to learn this early on.
Now that we've got our shading ready, we'll move on to creating another group for the suit and one for the background, as well as a photo filter set to warming filter 85, which should be the default setting, which we'll just leave as well as the other default settings, which is 100 opacity and normal mode. But make sure to drag this all the way down to just over the background layer. The groups themselves should be created with mirrored settings to the skin group. So what I normally do is I just duplicate the group and then erase all the color from the layer masks in the new group because I am very lazy. So go ahead and duplicate the skin group, then click the layer mask of the top layer, hit Control A and delete. And then click the layer mask of every layer down under it and just delete. You don't have to re Control A because you've already selected all of the layer. And we'll simply just leave the names and the colors of the layers for now, as we'll select appropriate colors later when we get to it. If you're working on a personal project, feel free to rename as you go. It's a lot easier to organize. And as I said in the first video, it's going to get important later on on bigger projects. Once the color has been erased, duplicate the group yet again, and there should be no color left over. But we now have two template groups, so to speak, that has a number of layers ready to use at a moment's notice, which is how I pretty much prefer to do my work. Just a lot of placeholder layers with no specific color. I simply adjust the colors needed on the fly and just kind of eyeball it. Pretty much uh, now would be a good time to reclip the layers as well to the top group, the skin group. So now that we have all that set up, we need to begin to shade. We have three shading layers clipped to our skin group with just random names. Feel free to rename these if you want, but we'll select the bottom one first and begin shading. The way I use these is that the bottom one is going to cover all the shadowy areas. The middle one will cover the whole area if I feel that it's necessary. And the top one will do the same as the bottom one in that it'll go into the shadowy areas if it's necessary to have more blue in there. All that this does is it creates a realistic feel because we're adding in the effect of light on a human face. You know how shadows are blue, especially really blue during the summer? That's kind of what we're doing here. We're mimicking the effects of light. And once you've added in the shadow shading on the first layer, we'll move on to the second layer. And we'll cover just the entirety of his hair, given that he had probably dark or black hair. And by this stage, you should begin to see a rapid improvement in the realistic look of the image. At this point, I like to increase the saturation of the skin a little bit, and if necessary, reduce the saturation of the hair. Because with the glowy, bright kind of color of the hair and skin together, it's really hard to judge from the contrast whether his skin is saturated enough. So as for now, I'll just do a slight increase in the skin saturation, and this means I might have to compensate a bit more with the third shading layer. And on this image, I'm also gonna use that layer to give him a bit of a stubble look, since it looks like he might have some in his upper lip. I'm also gonna use this layer to hit the areas of his hair and beard that look like they've grayed with age, as well as the same areas on his eyebrows. Once that's finished, we're gonna move on to the eyes. The same contrast problem applies here, and because Lincoln was said to have had gray eyes, we're gonna to have to take that information and reduce the saturation of the eye layer to a level where I feel it looks right. A lot of this is also just, you know, having colorized enough images and looked at enough real color images where you can sort of get a feel for what looks realistic enough. So I have a good sense of what something should look like, and for you, just try, you know, you can't go too wrong. Next, we're gonna to start to add a few extra tones to the face, just a bit of pink and a bit of purple to really flesh them out. So we'll take two layers from the clothing group and we'll drag them up to the top skin group and we'll reduce their opacity to 50%. It's very important that the layers lie above the skin group for the different purposes of blending. It, it, it's really very technical, I don't understand it. All that matters is that this works. So we'll change one to a pinkish tone and another to a blue-purple mix. And the pink is gonna go onto the eyelids that are not in the shadows and the purple will go under the eyes on his eye bags. So Lincoln is, a, is an old and at this point probably very stressed man. He probably had some purple eye bags. Now we'll go into the clothing group and we'll take the eye color layer since that's already blue and we need the blue for the suit. And we'll just tone it down a ton then color in his suit jacket and his waistcoat all in one layer. Once that's finished, we'll take another layer and color in his bow tie with a similar bluish tone, but make sure it's not an exact duplicate on the tone. You can just duplicate the layer or copy over the color code no one's gonna prosecute you. It just looks better if the tones are a little bit different. It's very subtle, but it works. Next, we're gonna do the background layer. And again, the eye color fits very well with what we want. So we'll take that and again, just tone it down a ton and just simply color everything, making sure not to hit his white shirt. I might go for a brown background on this normally, but because we're focusing more on the skin here, I'm gonna go with a dark grayish blue background. Now, just make sure that the, the insides of his eyes aren't hit either. But other than that, the groups that we set up should act as a buffer for the color so it'll blend really nicely. If you're feeling particularly adventurous, you can hit G for the fill tool, click on the background and just erase any overflow. This again, just saves time. I'm lazy, I know. 
So once the background color has been laid down and you've shaded the face, you've added the suit color, and you've toned down and increased what we did previously, you are actually 100% done. You've colorized a realistic looking black and white photograph. If you encounter clothing unlike the one found on the Lincoln portrait, the same rules apply as they do to the skin. You select an appropriate color, you create shading layers, and you click them onto either your layer directly or the group containing that layer, and you just shade the shadows. This also applies to trees, grass, cars, roads, and everything really has different colors than, than just what you see on the surface. Colors are going to be colder in the shadows, they're going to be warmer in the light, etc. This is a lot more complicated and will take more time to explain and show than we have today, so I think we'll just end it here for now. Now this method is one that I've built up over the last decade, and it's not going to be something that's easy just to pick up and learn. If you're just picking up Photoshop for the first time, you're not going to be working smoothly in no time. It'll take a long time and a lot of practice. But colorization is a, a fun little hobby, and if you get into colorizing family photographs, it can also bring a lot of joy. Seeing images come to life with colorization is, in my opinion, really something special. Thank you for watching, and thank you to History Colored for making this happen in the first place. I genuinely hope you enjoyed watching and learned something. And as always, feel free to ask any questions you may have either on my Facebook or my Instagram. I am more than happy to answer. Again, thank you for watching.